fun. Eh. <laughs> Thanks, Natalia. <laughs> but thank you guys for coming again. We're really excited to have you. And we're really excited to have Carlos here speaking about his career. And um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, guys. So before we... Before we get started, I want to go over a couple of rules and regulations. So um, just make sure that you guys are muted the whole time, especially while the guest hosts or like um, the offices are speaking and use appropriate language in the chat. But I want to see a lot of positive energy today. Um, I'm super excited that Carlos is here today to talk about his journey and like, anyway, that's very exciting. Um, and please be polite and yeah, that's really it. I mean, like, um, just make sure that there aren't any disruptions. If you guys aren't obeying the rules, I don't know, I guess like Isabel will cast her wrath, whatever that means. <laughs> um, and just know that the meeting is being recorded and it will be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you guys aren't comfortable, you don't have to turn your cameras on, but I encourage that you guys turn your cameras on, but if you guys don't want to, that's totally fine. Next slide. <clears throat> Okay, so for this quarter, we will be continuing using the attendance point system, um, which we've implemented as a way for everyone to keep track of meetings they've attended. And it's also an incentive for everyone to be active club members. So the system works as followed, earn a total of three points, uh, one point for signing in on a Google form at the begin beginning of the meeting, which is on the next slide, and then two points for signing out on the form and then getting the correct word of the day. Also, if you didn't attend the meeting live, you have 24 hours to complete the form and still earn points for the meeting. Um, and at the end of the year, the members with the most amount of points will win a free prize. And you can earn bonus points for participating in community service events, such as uh, donating blood at a blood drive or volunteering at vaccine sites. And that's a sign in sign up sheet for um, uh, this uh, part of the participation. Yeah, so just to clarify, you sign in now and then we're going to show this QR code again to the same sheet and then you can sign out to that as well. So make sure you um, clear, uh, make sure you press sign in for the sheet when you're doing it right now. We'll leave it on for a few more seconds and then we'll move on. Okay, so we have a couple upcoming events this quarter. Um, so today is club day, um, but this is really mainly for like new members, um, which is at four o'clock, but feel free to stop by. We'd love to see you all. Um, and then next week we have a guest speaker, Christina Ja. Um, she's a registered nurse. So she's gonna talk about her journey and like, um, I guess how she got to the job where she's at. And then we're going to take a little break. And then on February 19th, um, one of our, one of the former um, or uh, medical outreach alumni, uh, she gone to medical school. So she's going to talk about how she got from community college to medical school and maybe give us some hope. So <laughs> that's that. <laughs> Next slide. Oh, wow. Carla said gross. Okay. Don't worry, we love, we love PA too. There's like, I think majority of um, MOA members are into PA, so it'll be, it'll be exciting. All right, everybody. So just a reminder that we post opportunities on our website and here's that little scan code if you want to be directed to the website. Um, just recently we posted on the website and sent a Discord chat as well as email certain programs that you can apply for such as the Stanford Summer Community College pre-med programs, uh, virtual shadowing, and these pre-med pre resources that UCLA has sent to us uh, to share with you guys. Um, yes, Shania, also scholarships are there as well if anybody's interested in applying. Um, yeah, so just check the website if you want access to these opportunities slash resources. And these are all of our socials if you want to get connected with us. And we send out all the updates and reminders about events through our um, Gmail the most. So if you're not already, you can sign up for our email list using the QR code on the left side. 
And we also have all of these links, our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube on our link tree, as well as other um, important links as well. And also our meetings are going to be recorded and we always post them on our YouTube. So you can subscribe to that if you're not already and keep up with that. Okay, so I am so excited as well as everybody else. We're gonna welcome our first guest speaker of the quarter. Uh, Carlos is currently working as an ERPA at Kaiser and Sutter. So everyone, please welcome me and welcome me in joining Carlos. Thank you so much for coming in today. We cannot wait to hear about your story. Absolutely. I'm glad you guys are having me. Thank you very much. Okay. So do you want me to just go ahead and start? Yeah, go ahead and start. Um you said. So Carlos recently sent us this like really cool, like US news best job thing that I guess he wants to share. And I think it's awesome too. Oh yeah, no, um, physician assistant has been something that's been in the top, you know, five uh, in terms of best jobs for US news and money, ma money market and a lot of different things for at least the last five, six years with a lot of growth. So it's something that, you know, we're all very proud of and happy about in respect to the fact that the investment in time and, and money and energy kind of really does pay off. Um, and that's not necessarily something that's granted in a lot of the other specialties in medicine. Um, nursing is there. Um, MD is also there. Um, a lot of other different aspects of working in medicine are there. But, you know, it's super cool to see physician assistant uh, in the top position for 2021. So I am just wanted to share that with you guys. So next slide. Perfect. So the way that they've structured this for me is just kind of a brief personal introduction and then my pathway to PA school. And then I have a little presentation prepared that I've used before for other guests um, speaking uh, lectures and talks for kind of just a slightly exaggerated day to day in the emergency department over the course of 12 hours to the variety of cases that you can see and how they kind of run the gamut from, you know, simple to complicated to um, uh, stressful to, you know, funny and things like that. So, okay, next slide. And then also um, I, I do tend to talk quickly. So if you don't hear me or if I start to go too quickly, um, please let me know. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, but I, I'm also trying to kind of keep the flow going a little bit too. So um, I'll have to rely on my facilitators if any questions sneak by and uh, I'm always happy to pause and answer something um, or we can save them to the end. I'd love to have a, a little bit of time for questions at the end too, that would be great. Okay, so about me, uh, my name is Carlos Jaramillo, Jaramillo, depending on which side of town you grew up on. Um, I am from the Bay. My family's been in the Bay Area for a number of years. We're locals very much so. And I was class of 2000 at Fremont High School. Um, I was the very last year that it was the Fremont Indians before it was uh, politically corrected to the uh, Fremont Firebirds. Um, uh, interests outside of medicine. Uh, I'm a dad this year on purpose and very excited about that. Um, my wife and I have been trying for a little while and we have an absolutely wonderful little baby dragon who does not sleep. So that's why I'm in a onesie at one o'clock in the afternoon because uh, we're trying to make nap time happen. And I didn't realize that that's something you have to try to make happen now. <laughs> it was always something that's very simple. Um, I, do, I do still play video games. I do, I really do. Um, my wife used to laugh all the time about, you know, so what are you gonna do at home by yourself while I'm out and about or while I'm working? I said, you know, I'm playing, I'm gonna play some games with friends. And she's like, really? Isn't that kind of weird? And I always responded, well, it, would you rather I'm out at the club smoking and drinking and meeting fast women? And she's like, games it is. Games it is. I'll see you in a few hours. So um, I, I just blew 100 bucks on a Steam winter sale. I'm very excited about that. Got some titles from a couple of years ago because I'm a little bit behind the curve, but very excited about it. So um, some of the things I've done to stay fit, uh, because I'm not inclined necessarily to go to the gym, is I sign up for races. Um, and then I have it on the calendar and I kind of set myself a goal based on that. I'm very goal based. Uh, I guess that mess, I guess that may lend myself to working in emergency medicine because you can kind of see the improvement and the response in your cases kind of real time. It's not something that you have where you have somebody follow up three months later. Um, you can kind of say 
uh, and do things in the moment and see them get better and then go home or stay in hospital if things aren't going exactly the way that you expect. Um, my happiest um, accomplishment is my little sister who's in the military. She said she wanted to do a run with me and I didn't know that she meant an ultra run, which is anything longer than a marathon, 26 miles. And she signed us up for a 70 mile, no, 70 K, 70 kilometer run. And uh, we actually completed it. It was great. And my sister's the smallest, smallest Marine you've ever seen. She's about five foot nothing. And they had to make her boots special for her. So um, she had to run all the way through the desert with me and we actually finished. So next, next slide. Uh, my undergrad was at UC Davis. I got accepted to a couple different places for undergrad. Um, no, I did not apply to De Anza, I'm sorry. Um, I was looking to get away from home a little bit, having been in the Bay Area for such a long time. Um, I got waitlisted for Stanford, I got into UC Davis, and I think if I recall correctly, I got into UC LA as well. Um, I had been really excited about UC Davis offering a genetics major, so I decided to go with UC Davis and I was excited for the first few years until I realized at the end of my genetics course that it was pretty much just my last year was gonna be sorting and counting fruit flies for the entire year. And that anything that I wanted to do above that was kind of master's level um, or I was gonna end up kind of working in a very small cubicle in a lab. So I changed it up to microbiology after speaking with my counselor. She said that was kind of the, one of the options that I had that didn't require going backwards and it had a lot of labs associated with it. So I was really excited about that because labs were always kind of something that I was really into hands-on and tended to do well. Um, and uh, I was excited to see that there was three or four labs that I could take towards the end of my, um, my time in college. I graduated in 2015. So I did four and a quarter. I did four and a quarter. It could have easily been four and two quarters, but I was lucky enough uh, to finish up with um, my major and my philosophy minor, um, which I took as a way to become a diverse applicant to medical school, as opposed to being a music minor or something else like that. It was all about that strategy. Um, but I'm very happy that I minored in something outside of the sciences. It kind of broadens your horizons a little bit. And I'll have to say that to this day, the reasoning and um, critical thinking skills I learned in philosophy really helped me throughout the day-to-day -day in my job, surprisingly, uh, pleasantly so. Um, I got my EMT license during college because I wanted to volunteer um, and work in some medical facility. Uh, unfortunately, most of everything that was paid uh, was kind of inherited legacy from all of the um, the Greek houses, they kind of, that was the main thing to why everybody in college would rush is because a lot of the pre-professional fraternities and sororities had a lock on all of the good rotations and all of the good um, volunteer positions and all of the paid positions. So um, I got my EMT license and I was a firefighter for the US Forest Service um, for about three or four years. And it was excellent experience, um, the fire experience. Um, after university, um, I decided that I needed to kind of dial things down a little bit because the financial aid wasn't coming in anymore. So I decided to start looking for work before taking the next step in my career. And there was a lot of different options that I looked into, whether or not I was going to apply to medical school outright or if I was going to take some time. And I told myself at 25, I would make the decision. I graduated at 22. I said three good years of sorting things out and kind of setting myself aside a little bit of money and a little bit of security before taking that next step. And um, I looked into a lot of different things. I looked at nursing programs, which were kind of cool, but they were super long and waitlisted. And it was really unfortunate to see that, you know, it would be three more years or two or three more years for waitlisting for nursing. Um, I went to a job fair with a good friend of mine who were, we had uh, graduated and we went and saw that there was a booth from the FBI, which we thought was totally cool. And they actually had positions. They had positions open uh, looking for special agents and forensics and things like that. So I dropped an application, which was super exciting. And I made it pretty far. I made it to the second stage after the three hour personality profile and written exam. Um, I was on track for a polygraph uh, panel interview um, before going uh, the next step when I got the phone call from PA school. And I was excited to be offered acceptance for um, UC Davis and for Stanford. They were off cycle applications at the time. They were um, programs that I applied to um, because they were still open to apply to. They had rolling applications and I wasn't able to apply to some of the other kind of more local programs for PA school like Samuel Merritt or USC um, or Toro University. Um, but I wasn't too concerned with not getting in on the first round since most medical programs had been either waitlisted or had become pretty popular. So 
Next slide. And then just some uh, really gratuitous snapshots of things I've done in my career so far. Um, upper left is uh, working with my EMS crew. And if you zoom in on that patch, that is Paramount's Great America, where I was on staff there as one of the EMS providers for Paramount's Great America. Paramount's Great America has an EMS staff. Um, they have an in-house ambulance and uh, one, two, three, four, five at that time, uh, EMTs that would respond to accidents all over the park for the guests as well as the employees. Because you have to remember that uh, a theme park is also a machine, lots of big equipment and a lot of dangerous things behind the scenes. So um, it's definitely uh, an interesting time. Uh, top right is uh, one of the dispatches I went to for fire. Uh, we were the initial attack, which means you were the first ones who showed up. No, I didn't get in the helicopter, unfortunately. It was just a nice opportunity to pose next to it with our whole crew. And we're all very dirty. Um, the one in the middle, uh, it's kind of dark, but that's me. Uh, and at that time, uh, I think we had been on dispatch for about three days in a row and none of us had bathed. So uh, that's that life. <laughs> Lower left is a, just a, a stock photo of something that I've been a part of. Uh, I've had planes fly over and have retardant drops while we're fighting fires. In the bottom middle is a couple of people that I worked with teaching EMT class at UC Davis. I got an offer to become an instructor a few years back for the EMT program at UC Davis with two really cool guys that I've worked with. On the right of me is... Uh, Stuart, he's a fire captain in San Francisco, I think retired in the last couple of years. And the guy on the left is Derek. I think he works in biotech now. He went to Edinburgh for graduate school. And then on the right is, uh, on the bottom right is a picture of a couple of crew members and myself from uh, a dispatch, I think in Northern California. And yes, my collar is up. Uh, a couple more pictures. Uh, I couldn't resist on the upper left, it just, amuses me to no end, um, the medical alert bracelet. Um, in the middle is the uh, is a vehicle accident in Vallejo. Um, there's a lot of car accidents that you respond to as an EMT and as a firefighter. Bottom left is the BART train. I think it's the Fruitvale, um, Fruitvale station uh, or one near there, maybe Merritt. Uh, you can see the Oakland fire logo on the back of the firefighter. And then on the right here is my pack and gear for the US Forest Service when I was a firefighter with them. Um, you can see the medic bag attached to my pack. Next slide. Uh, Pre-PA pathway. So, um, I mean, I, I think one of the main things, and I'll, and I'll reiterate it, is that having, you know, stepped outside of the academic world for a little while, where all of the input that you get is, you know, medical school or bust, is that I was really greatly impressed upon how much different aspects of medicine that were to work in. And I think the biggest lesson that I could tell anybody would be the fact that the measuring stick for success is not MD or nothing. If MD is your path, if that's your song, then go ahead and dance to it. I know many people that I've come across who have a very particular inclination to go to the MD pathway, family or friend member, or were inspired for something very specific, or they've always wanted that particular aspect of it to open their own clinic or something like that or to travel internationally um, but you shouldn't feel discouraged if you feel like it's not entirely what you want to do or if you have some reservation upon it medical school is not going anywhere you can go at any time um, so long as you have your prereqs you can apply at any stage in life there's many people in, in medical programs uh, second careers third careers changes in life status so it's it's not going anywhere and you can be very happy and very successful um, working in medicine with a different scope of practice. So um, that's the reason I decided on PA school over medical school. Additionally, in particular, it, it was very much so that PA school built upon my previous experience and all the classes that I had taken already. Um, so it felt like I was adding to a skill set that I had already developed as opposed to kind of starting all over again and going back to my first year of undergrad, which is what I kind of viewed um, medical school as. It was another four years of just focused uh, undergrad with some rotations and things like that in the medical sciences, which is great. Um, but I kind of felt like it would be going backwards a little bit for me. Um, and uh, at that time, Stanford had an accelerated program, which was 18 months. It's currently three years, which is not um, them fluffing the tuition. It's just kind of a mandate now that as of 2020, um, all PA programs are master's level and typically run about two to three years um, to get your master's with it as well. 
Um, when I graduated PA school in 2010, my background in EMS definitely helped me get ED jobs. And I was just telling the panel earlier that I had tried to apply to primary care positions, but they were really kind of recruiting me for emergency department. And um, I took a job and I haven't looked back. Uh, I was at Valley Medical Center in Santa Clara, the county hospital, the county stroke center, the county heart alert center, the county burn center. Uh, for seven years, and I was exposed to all those aspects of working in the emergency department. I worked with burn nurses, um, uh, traumas, I worked with residents um, from different specialties in all of those uh, environments. And currently, I work at Kaiser in Santa Clara, and I kind of double dip by working for Sutter in Fremont, which is also PAMP, uh, Palo Alto Medical Foundation. It's because it's two different practice environments, and that's one of the awesome things um, that I really like about having my PA license. Um, is the fact that I can kind of work in different environments without having to go back um, and, and recertifying uh, or any kind of uh, secondary testing or anything like that to be able to switch what specialty I work in or which practice environment I work in. They both offer different things. Um, Kaiser in Santa Clara is a big busy hospital and they have us there on the fast track side to kind of be the procedure the proceduralists of the emergency department. We do broken bones, we do lacerations, we do dislocations, we do a lot of different things. Uh, in Fremont, it's kind of a slightly slower pace, but a more complex patient population where I can see my weak and dizzy and my chest pain, my short of breath, and do a lot of workups for belly pain and labs and diagnostics and things like that. So it's really been beneficial to me to be able to play both sides of the coin um, in my scope of practice. Um, the medicine's generally the same everywhere you go. It's the environment that you work in that makes all the difference. Next slide. Um, in terms of getting experience, so I got my hours in EMS and fire just happened to be what it is that I, I landed in uh, before PA and it wasn't with PA school in mind. It was just the skill set that I had that I was leveraging for uh, living. Um, it was what I did after after college to kind of make uh, um, make ends meet and everything like that. Um, not to bag on EMS or anything like that, but it is challenging because there's a lot of turnover in EMS. It's a difficult job, especially working as an EMT. Uh, the US and California doesn't have a great reputation with paying their first responders very much in that respect. We're kind of the uh, Harry Potter under the stairs group of people when it comes to your um, municipalities. I mean, fire gets paid well, um, police gets paid well. EMS, it's a challenge. Um, I mean, 10 to $12 starting wage to ride around on ambulances with uh, lights and sirens and, and be in difficult situations um, and do a lot of heavy lifting and things like that. If that's something that appeals to you, then great. You know, it's real awesome and real fun to, you know, have lights of sirens and uh, intense situations, but I viewed it more, of, more as a stepping stone. So I got my experience and when it became to kind of wear on me, I realized that it was not the long-term gains. Um, the Foothill program is an excellent program. Um, I have friends that have gone through that program that have decided to become city fire. And I, I would say that that's definitely an option that I would consider taking um, as opposed to working for a private ambulance company. Uh, private ambulance companies come and go. You'll see them all over the, all over the place and, and they're not particularly stable. Um, but um, being able to transition from EMS into a you know, fire department job is, is definitely a way. But personally, if I were to do it again, um, ultrasound tech, radiology tech, uh, emergency department tech, their schedules are incredible. You kind of call the shots on when you want to work. Um, you can be the on-call ultrasound tech overnight at an emergency department and get paid a base rate plus a productivity rate for any calls that you get, plus a emergency rate for working overnights. Um, you can kind of stack differentials and you get really great compensation. And the same thing goes for radiology. You know, people need scans and studies um, all night and all hours of the day. Um, and the nice thing about those tech positions is that they are all associate level. Um, a technician position is an associate level. So your first two degree, for first two years of any degree or an associates typically cover almost all of the prerequisites. And then you have some focus classes after that. Um, and uh, I would love to do that. It'd be great. It, it offers you a lot of exposure to patients and their experience in a, in a very particular medical setting. You get to work with all of the different clinicians, all of the different MDs and uh, mid-levels and things uh, as, as kind of a liaison and go between. And I more often than not will call my ultrasound tech or radiology tech and just ask them their opinion on certain things because they look at scans all day um, and I value their opinion. So it's not like they're just grunt work um, doing scut. They're all capable, intelligent people. Um, 
I was super impressed when my wife and I were trying to have uh, a little one, we had a visit with a fertility doctor and they have ultrasound techs in the fertility clinics that are measuring all sorts of really high-end, really fancy things uh, that I was totally blown away by. And ultrasound is one of my favorite things to play with in the emergency department. And I was totally taken aback by how much more there is to it and all the other specialties. So I would, I would do that if I were to do it again. Um, and then EMT to paramedic at my time, it was uh, another two years of schooling for maybe three or $4 per hour with a lot more stress and a lot more um, liability. So I didn't particularly feel that it was great for me, but you'll see a lot of fire programs want you to have your paramedic. And unfortunately, a lot of people just stumble through the paramedic part to get the firefighter part. And you don't have a lot of good um, paramedic firefighters. You have firefighters that have some paramedic training um, but a good paramedic firefighter is few and far between. You'll be able to tell them because they're the one that's not running. They're the one that's walking carefully with the bag, uh, assessing the situation as opposed to running in full speed. So uh, next slide. Day-to-day, uh, -day, um, I work about three 12-hour shifts, uh, and, which sounds like really long days, but I have a scheduled break for Kaiser. They give me a scheduled break, which is really nice. Um, and then for PAMP, I work eight to 10 hours um, and with a little break whenever it is that I want to take it, um, which sounds grueling. But if you look at the flip side of it, I only work three out of seven days in the week, which is fantastic for me. I have a lot of time to travel and to relax and play video games, um, you know, and, and help raise my son. I get to be home um, with my wife and get to spend time with family and friends. Um, and the work-life balance cannot be understated in terms of um, I feel like I've really come out a winner as a PA in terms of the work-life balance. I've been able to balance things really well. Um, you know, being able to travel during the week when hotels and flights are cheap, um, not having to look after for residency and be in the stressful situation of not knowing if I'm going to match for residency or not. Um, and, you know, I always tell people that, you know, while I had friends that were struggling to match for residency and not knowing whether or not they're going to be able to take the next step, uh, I was getting married in Fiji. It was fantastic. Uh, next slide. Um, there is definitely no rush. The programs aren't going anywhere. If anything, you're better off kind of getting a little bit of experience. Um, take a fun, silly job, you know, to take some time to kind of clear your mind and really decide what your path is going to be. I would have to say that one of the most eye-opening things to me as an American traveling, um, which is one of the things I was able to do after I graduated from PA school, I had the ability to travel. Um, was the fact that so many other countries take a break after high school, before college, to travel and to experience the world, you know, after college, before their career, again, to travel and to experience the world, because those opportunities kind of, they pass you by a lot of times. And if you're on a grind from undergrad to college to uh, masters to med school, you find yourself looking up at 34, 35 years old, not having ever taken a real proper vacation. Um, and I didn't take my first proper vacation until I graduated from PA school. Um, and I couldn't believe that I wasn't doing this more often. Um, and it was just one of those things that I, I can't stress enough that there's you know, plenty of time to kind of feel out what your next step will be. I know the FOMO is real in a lot of the academic circles because of everybody doing something to progress, but you shouldn't feel like you're doing anything wrong by taking a few months to sort yourself out, to take a job, uh, working in a lab, doing something that you enjoy before adding the stress of a, of a career that you may be pursuing for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, no one's judging you. Nobody cares when you graduated. Um, definitely nobody ever asks your GPA after you graduate unless it's on an application. Anybody in polite conversation won't ask you about your GPA. That's just weird. Um, Work-life balance uh, is what allows you to keep doing a difficult job because it can be rewarding, but it's also stressful. You have to kind of decompress. It's very important to be able to decompress from a stressful job. Um, and then again, like I had said before, um, you know, work is always to some degree a grind. I mean, I get patients that are just, you know, aggravating and I see all the time for really minor things. Um, but the practice environment in which you do it, the support, the colleagues, um, the camaraderie really makes all the difference. And the balance is an important part of what's been allowing me to work in emergency medicine with all the stress um, that it comes with um, for a number of um, for a number of years. And I plan to continue doing it. So okay, next slide. 
Oh, and today's word of the day is winter. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, <laughs> and then we're going to go into your case presentations, correct? Um, yeah, if, if you didn't want to pause.